So in this example, we have a ball is projected vertically upwards with a speed of 15.7 meters per second from a point which is 12 meters above horizontal ground. Modeling the ball as a particle moving freely under gravity, find, first of all, the greatest height above the ground reached by the ball. Now, in this question, I'm going to use G is 9.8 meters per second per second, which for AQA uh, means that we've got to round our answers to two significant figures at the end. Let's draw a diagram so we can visualize what's going on. Here's the ground. Here is the ball. And it is projected vertically upwards from a height of 12 meters. So that distance is 12 meters. It is thrown upwards, and it's going to reach a maximum height when its velocity is zero. And then it's going to start falling back towards the ground, accelerating towards the ground. So we want to find the greatest height above the ground reached by the ball. So essentially from there up to that highest point. So S-U-V-A-T. Let's go straight into SUVAT. Now it's projected with a speed of 15.7 meters per second. So the initial velocity is 15.7. We're going to take upwards as positive. When it reaches its maximum height, so it's projected upwards, it reaches the maximum height, the velocity will be zero at that point. The acceleration when it's slowing down, okay, um, and it's slowing down by 9.8 meters per second per second. So the acceleration is minus 9.8. And we want to work out that vertical displacement. So we want the SUVAT equation that doesn't involve t, which is the last one, v squared equals u squared plus 2as. So v squared is u squared plus 2as. v squared is 0 squared. u squared is 15.7 squared plus 2 lots of a, which is minus 9.8, times by S. OK. So we have 15.7 squared divided by 2 divided by 9.8 when we rearrange it. And we should get 12.576, etc. metres. Now that is the vertical displacement from that point. But we're already 12 meters in the air. So the distance from the ground to that maximum height is actually going to be 12 plus the 12.576. So the maximum height, the greatest height, will be 12 plus the 12.576, and so that gets us 24.576. But we've got to round that to two significant figures, because we're using g is 9.8. So that's going to be, so let's write it down here. So max height is going to be 24.576 meters. And so, rounded to two significant figures will be 25 meters to two sig fig. That's my answer to part A. Okay, now the next question is gonna ask, find the speed with which the ball first strikes the ground. Now, some people might want to use that previous result in order to work through the next bit. But what if it's wrong? So in the exam, I don't know if it's wrong or not. So if I can tackle the question without using a result from part A and go at it from scratch, then uh, I may have more luck on getting the answer right. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm not going to use my previous result. The acceleration, of course, is still minus 9.8. I'm still going to take upwards as positive. Um, now, the speed with which the ball first strikes the ground. So I'm still going to take the initial velocity as 15.7, going upwards. The final velocity is what I'm interested in. 
From that, I can then work out the speed. Now, what's important here is what do I know about where the particle is when it strikes the ground? I know that the ball has been projected upwards, got to its highest point, and then fallen back towards the ground. So when it strikes the ground, the ball is 12 metres below where it started. So its vertical displacement from where it started is minus 12 metres. So minus 12 is S. So I want the equation without T, which again, is v squared is u squared plus 2as. And I want v this time, u squared, so 15.7 squared, plus 2 lots of minus 9.8 times s, which is minus 12. So we have 15.7 squared plus 2 times 9.8 times 12. So that's getting me v squared is 481.69. Square root that, and I get that the velocity... Now, remember, I'm taking upwards as positive. So in square rooting, actually the velocity, when it hits the ground, it's travelling downwards, so actually the v... The final velocity is actually minus 21.947, etc., meters per second, because it's traveling downwards at that point. So the speed, however, obviously ignores uh, the direction, and I still need to round it to two significant figures, and so that would be 22 meters per second to uh, two significant figures. Okay, now again, I'm not going to use previous results to get my next bit if I can help it. Now I need to find the total time from when the ball is projected to when it first strikes the ground. Okay, so the initial velocity is the same, 15.7. The acceleration is the same, minus 9.8. And I know when it first strikes the ground, S is minus 12, because it's 12 metres below where it started. So actually, I can keep all of that, but now I want to work out the time. So I want the equation that doesn't have V, which is number 3. So S is UT plus 1 half AT squared. So minus 12 is 15.7 times t plus 1 half times minus 9.8, so minus 4.9 t squared. Let's rearrange that, get everything onto one side. I'll move it onto the left-hand side. So 4.9 t squared take away 15.7 t take away 12 is 0. And now I'm going to use my calculator to solve the quadratic. So we have 4.9 minus 15.7 minus 12. And we get t is 3.84157, etc. seconds. And the other result is negative. So minus 0.637, etc. seconds. Which, of course, we must discount because we're not having negative time. That would... Suppose that it hits the ground uh, before it was projected. Okay, so ignore that. So this is our answer, but we need to round it to two significant figures because remember we're using g is 9.8, and so we need 3.8 seconds to two significant figures. So that's the total time from when the ball is projected to when it first strikes the ground. Now, there are going to be many ways of tackling these same questions uh, in different orders um, and using previous results, but this is probably the safest way through, okay, because each time uh, I'm not relying on a previous result which could potentially be wrong, and that's something I'm going to try and avoid in the exam.